From Timothy Chalamet's barely visible homage to previous portrayals of Wonka. I mean, it's so slight as to be imperceptible. To unexpected accents of the characters, and to Hugh Grant being unhappy with that film. It made me enraged already, I hate it. <laughs> Let's discuss all the fabulous facts about the new Wonka movie. For the film director, Paul King, there was no question about whom to cast for the main role. Timothy Chalamet was his first and only choice. He didn't even need to audition. After the director saw videos on YouTube where the actor sang and danced as his rapper alter ego, Timmy Tim. He knew that Timothy was perfect, and he was right. If you think about it, Chalamet as Wonka makes a lot of sense. His portrayal of the famed chocolate maker was delightful and goofy, and Timothy also paid homage to previous actors who played Wonka. The new film had quite a few nods to the original Charlie and the Chocolate Factory movie, and some were so slight that you could easily miss them, like this one. Going down the stairs in the opening number, and there, there was that homage to Gene Wilder, I don't know, he goes down the stairs, he pops back up. Did you pick up on it? And did you? It was pretty imperceptible, and as Chalamet revealed, it wasn't easy to do this pop back. That's way harder than it looks, you know, and... But there's more. Remember how Wonka was excited to present his chocolate to the public for the first time? He was so thrilled that he began flipping words. So quiet up and listen down. Nope, scratch that, reverse it. In the original film, Gene Wilder's Wonka did the same thing. I get on, we have so much time and so little to do. Strike that, reverse it. Once again, it was because he got so excited. Share in the comments below how you liked Chalamet's delivery of the line. And let's move on. It's no wonder that Timothy's portrayal is different from previous ones by Gene Wilder and Johnny Depp. After all, Wonka is much younger and more ambitious in the prequel. He's not as eccentric as Wilder's interpretation, and much less creepy than Depp's. And this is the Willy Wonka before all his screws loose in his head, before he's totally lost his mind. But it all doesn't mean that it's a bad portrayal. In fact, Timothy is a huge fan of the previous movies. Yeah, I grew up on that Gene Wilder film. I'm hugely ad admiring of the Tim Burton, Johnny version. This is different. This is the origin of, right. of Wonka. So it didn't have to be the same. But I think Paul King, our director, pulled this one off. And I'll let people judge for themselves. And here are some other references to previous films. In Wonka, we saw the first time the peculiar chocolatier gave someone a lifetime supply of his product. Remember how he offered it to Noodle for her help with his endeavors? In Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, he promised the same thing to the winning kids. And this is what the kind boy named Charlie gets at the end of the original film, along with becoming the heir to Wonka's empire. But that's not all. He hid five golden tickets on his chocolate bars in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. The five kids who found them could compete for the ultimate prize. And in Wonka, we see where he probably got this idea. After defeating his enemies, Willie holds the first ever golden ticket in his hands. He finds it in the last bar of chocolate his late mother gave him. And he reads from it that the best chocolate is the one you share with your loved ones. This gives the golden tickets in his contest a deeper meaning, with Wonka remembering his mother's words. Now on to the other characters. All of the Wonka characters have a British accent, except for one. Keegan-Michael Key's chief of police speaks in a different manner. And as it turned out, it was no accident. Although the actor can do a British accent, the director wanted his character to sound more copish. We want him to be a police officer, we want him to be a cop. And so we decided to go with this kind of Brooklyn-y thing, you know. Sure, it made him sound different from everyone else, but it was a cool move. And here's another thing about this actor. The chief of police has such a powerful sweet tooth that it makes him corrupt and affects his appearance quite a bit. He gets more and more chocolate boxes as a bribe and gains incredible amounts of weight. And you might be wondering how exactly the actor pulled off this change. So here's the answer. He wore a fat suit along with prosthetics. The hair and makeup team and the wardrobe team. Yeah. Unbelievably amazing work. It looked very natural, too. I would just sit there sometimes when they'd take a break and look in the mirror and can't see the seams. I mean, there was makeup right, right, right here, and for some reason it just looked like my eyelid. Although using a fat suit could seem like an outdated gag to some viewers, it did the job for the actor. But not everyone was on board with Key's frolics. The comedian tried to make an impression of Hugh Grant. In the film, when Hugh Grant says, I, would, uh, I will have you know that I am perfectly respectable size for Oompa Loompa. <laughs> this. But the British actor wasn't amused by it. He's heard me do it, and I believe what he said to me was that I sound like him having a stroke. <laughs> and that wasn't the only thing Hugh hated about the film. In fact, he didn't like playing an Oompa Loompa at all. 
largely, it was because of working with the green screen. And he also probably didn't think that the orange color suited him best. I couldn't have hated the whole thing more, Grant said. Frankly, what I did with my body was terrible. Funnily enough, the director of Wonka commented on his Oompa Loompa dance. Like the angriest dancing in film history. You might ask why he even agreed to be in Wonka in this case. Well, his answer is simple. He has five kids and needs the money. But I don't know what that does to them at school, really. You know, other people's fathers are lawyers and international human rights people, and I'm an Oompa Loompa. Thankfully, there was something he liked. The actor enjoyed working with Timothy, yet he was a bit nervous about it at first. I don't like anyone being too successful. Uh, so I was a little anxious about Timothy Chalamet. I, I, his graph was too vertical. And Grant even called him the proper old-fashioned film star. It's quite a compliment, especially coming from a grumpy person like you. To get that from you, that's like, it's like getting a royal flush or something. Yeah, Chalamet was flattered, and he had another co-star who enjoyed his company. The 14-year-old actress has been in business for a decade already, but Wonka became her big break. And Kayla had a lot of fun working with Timothy and other actors in the movie. I mean, it just made me grow internally. The young actress even saw how her older co-stars can be chameleons. Olivia Coleman, for example, was totally different on and off set. She's just a sweet person. It was like confusing because she would like throw me into this thing and then be all mean to me when they say action. But then after they're like, oh my gosh, are you okay? <laughs> yes, that's what it means to be a good actress. But Kayla shared most of her scenes with Timothy. And in one of them, they got covered in chocolate, literally. That was certainly a hard scene to film for both Timothy and Kayla. Sure, it wasn't dangerous as the pool was shallow and they just had to squat for some time. And in case you wondered, yes, it was the real deal. Look, it was real chocolate. That was real chocolate. Of course, there's a funny story about it. In fact, the director said to me, Paul, I said, you know, you should like taste some of it. But it looks like it wasn't good for eating. Somebody from behind the camera was like, no, don't, yeah, don't, yeah, you don't want that toxic <laughs> stuff going in your body. The actor certainly loved playing this character. So let's see what he thinks about doing it again. In fact, Chalamet is open for a Wonka sequel. He said that if there's a story to be told, he'll play the eccentric chocolatier in another film. And there's a lot to tell about his life. After all, we see quite a difference between the young, naive, ambitious Willie and the insane guy who rules his chocolate factory. How did he come all the way there? And how did other Oompa Loompas come to work with him? Quite a lot of things could have happened between this and when Wonka met Charlie. It's pretty exciting to see all about it. And do you think that making a sequel to Wonka is a good idea? Share in the comments below, and don't forget to stay awesome. <laughs>